The Anime begins with our protagonist named Serenuma K, who is a chubby Fujoshi that keeps admiring men in every situation that can be taken out of context and drooling over them. In one of those, her classmate Nozomu runs her over in gym class, and as a consequence, the proto flies away. Still, the only thing that mattered her was the beautiful scene her eyes witnessed before this, and she thinks about that Nozomu looks like the protagonist of her favorite BL series. A little later, her partner Hayato arrives and sees her well, and asks if he can vacate the bed, as another student got injured. Her friend Amain thinks that Hayato is too cold with her, but the proto doesn't mind, although Amain realizes that the proto meets a lot of handsome guys like her senpai Asuma, Yusuk, and the other ones we saw before, although she only sees them as visual delight because that's the position she decided to take. In the evening, she sets out to watch her BL series, and in that, her favorite character dies to the proto as a way of protest. Misses classes for a week, also she is willing not to eat or leave her room. The proto's mother calls Takura, the older brother of Kat, and tells him to force his way into her sister's room as she is worried about her. They both get a big surprise when they see K because, due to not eating for a whole week, the proto had a tremendous glow up and now she is a divine beauty, so much so that she doesn't even recognize herself in the mirror. As expected, everyone in her classroom is surprised, and those who previously treated her badly suddenly fall in love at first sight because of her new beauty. At that moment, Nozomu approaches our protagonist, and when she sees him, she runs out of the classroom because the boy brings her bad memories of the protagonist of her BL series. At that, she bumps into Hayato, who also falls in love with her and prepares to take her to the infirmary since she got hurt her knees, leaving the proto surprised since he is usually very cold with her. At the infirmary, they both meet Asuma and he does recognize her despite her physical change because our proto still acts just as friendly as before. On the way out, Yusuke takes the lead and decides to ask Kei to hang out, but the other boys also wanted to hang out with her. So all in all, she has a date with the four hottest guys in school. That's right. The proto calls Amain to help her dress up for the date while they talk about boys and how bad she would look if the boys found out that she is secretly an otaku. Because of this, the proto goes to turn to act like a person who doesn't have those tastes. But, upon arriving outside the movie theater, she hides to appreciate the beauty of the most handsome boys in her school, and drools imagining a million Fujoshi scenes. At that, Yusuke notices that Kaz is there, so he calls her and she starts her date with the four boys in the cinema. The movie manages to bore Nozomu, to the point where he falls asleep on Yusuke's shoulder. The proto, upon seeing this, stops watching the movie and starts appreciating the cute scene of the boys. On the other hand, Hayato ends up crying because of the story of the movie, even though he said it was a bad history. Stosuma gives him some tissues to dry his tears and snot. This makes our proto fantasize again, so she decides to go to the bathroom to stop thinking about it. When leaving the bathroom, Yusu takes K by the hand and takes her to a place to take pictures. At that moment, she feels something in her heart. She feels something for a man for the first time. But this feeling gets cut when Nozomi finds them, and the pictures end up being pictures of a fight between two men, which is a beautiful scene for the cat. For the rest of the day, the proto tries to hide her otaku side while having fun with the guys and this leaves her exhausted. As she leaves the movie theater, she overhears a salesman, who is promoting a pillow of her favorite character from her BL series. She can't resist any longer and breaks her promise to pretend not to be an otaku, and heads to the store to buy the pillow. On the way out, the proto confesses to the guys that she is an otaku, while thinking that this might be the end of her relationship with them. The boys are not very surprised and accept her, but especially Asuma, who prefers the proto to be herself and not hide her tastes. The chapter ends with Ka telling her friend everything that happened in her date with the boys and then showing her the pictures they took at the movie theater. The next day, Mizomu is surprised to see that Yusuke is using the keychain that the proto gave everyone at the end of their date. Then they both head to the gym and are impressed that Ka is playing volleyball well, and Nozomu thinks about how she was always like that even when she was chubby which leaves him a bit confused. Because of this, her classmates decide to ask her to join the soccer club momentarily, since one of their members injured her knee at Prota, even though she doesn't know how to play soccer, accepts, since she trusts the soccer anime she has watched throughout her life. All the guys are surprised to hear this, and Yusuk offers to help her with her training. He tells Nozomu to collaborate and help the Prota as well. But he refuses, as he doesn't think Kei can make it in a week. So the proto gets very upset with him, and they all end up fighting over this. Later, the proto begins with the soccer practices, and the warm-up already leaves her very exhausted. Days go by, and her practices improve almost nothing. So the teammates who asked her for help start to think that they shouldn't have asked her for help, and Nozomu manages to listen to them, and tells them to change their attitude, since they were the ones who asked for the proto's help in the first place, and leaves them silent. When Nozomu sees the proto, he realizes what the girls were talking about her, since she can't score a single goal against the opposing team, 
So he tells her to give up, but the proto tells him that she won't give up, since she wants to complete the challenge and prove that with discipline and willpower, anything is possible. Seeing her passion, Nozomu decides to help her until the day of the match. On the day of the match, the proto's team is about to lose with a score of 0 to 1, so she decides to make one last impossible move and tells her team about it. They agree and proceed to do it. The proto receives the ball and aims at her own arc. At that moment, the ball makes an impossible turn towards the opposing team's arc and manages to score an epic goal. Then in class, the proto feels more relaxed, since the vacations are near and she has a lot of things to do. But the teacher appears and tells her to worry about her exams first, because otherwise, she will have to attend school for two weeks and she will not have a vacation. Asuma offers to help her study, and the other boys jump in and plan to go with them to study too, and so they head to the library. While they are studying, Nozomu tries to make Hayato feel lesser, since he is a year younger than them, so Nozomu tries to kick him out of the group, but Hayato shows him with clever answers that he despite being a year younger, is someone who knows more than Nozomu, and makes him look like a fool. At that, the two boys start arguing, so the rest of the students who were there, end up kicking the team out of the library. Then they go to a family restaurant, and the same thing happens as in the library, so they decide to go to the proto's house, and before they enter her room, the proto proceeds to do a quick cleanup, so they don't see her otaku stuff. Hei's mother is excited to see so many handsome guys, so she puts on some makeup to look nice for them, but the proto tells her that she looks like she's out of a horror movie and pushes her away from entering her room. On the other hand, Nozomu is disappointed to be there, as he thought it would be something like a romantic date, while he helps the proto to study. While the proto goes on with her mom, the guys start to find the otaku stuff that Kai hid, and at first they freak out, as is pretty sickening the fanaticism the proto has for her favorite character from her anime. Kat returns and sees that the guys discovered her stuff, so she shows them the altar she made to her deceased Anon character, and they all start praying for her loss. Suddenly, the proto's brother arrives and is surprised that she brought a lot of boys, so he sets out to expose her as the otaku she is, but this ends up upsetting Asuma, and he tells him that everyone knows the proto's tastes, and he's being very rude with her, and kindly kicks him out of the room. The brother is surprised and remembers the words his sister said to him, which were not everyone is a narrow-minded like you. After the boys leave her house, the proto's brother gives her two treats as an apology for acting like a fool. In the end, the proto passes the exam, then all the boys ask her to hang out, but she has her otaku priorities above the boys. Days later, a cultural festival will take place at the school, and the boys come up with the idea of having a maid cafe, to which the proto loves, but she suggests that the men should dress up as maids so that she can make the costumes for Nozomu and Yusuke. Asuma worries because he is accepting quite a few jobs at the same time and doesn't think he can assist the event, but the proto has faith that he will be able to attend. At the same time, the proto finds out that Hayato will be playing the role of a princess in her sullen's theater and offers to make his costume to be the prettiest princess of all, but she didn't think it would cost a lot of work. Yusuke offers to help her and the others also do the same. Kat remembers that she had to help the history club, so the boys agree to replace her in the club while she starts making the costumes. Yusuke doesn't seem comfortable with the relationship they all have, so he asks Nozomu why he keeps trying to pick up the proto, and Nozomu replies that it's because he has fun with her. Thanks to the guy's help, the proto manages to finish the costumes and is happy for her. But this doesn't hold for long, because Yusuke arrives and confesses to the proto that he's in love with her. Nozomu and Hayato appear, and tell her that they are in love too. Because of this, Asuma proposes to the proto that it would be best if she divides her time in equal parts, so that each boy can go out with her without the others causing a disturbance. It seems like a great idea to everyone except the proto, since she wanted to have fun at the festival with everyone, but now she has to go out with each of the boys at different times and not together as before. She started his break and the first on the list is Nozomu. In the middle of their date, they run into a big crowd, so they couldn't be alone, and just when Nozomu is about to make his master move, Asuma interrupts them, since their time is up. He takes the proto to get something to eat. He feeds her to the mouth in a romantic way, so the proto gets nervous, although it seems Asuma didn't do it with the cliché intention of the indirect kiss. Then it's Yusuke's turn, and they both go to see Hayato's show. Hayato wastes no time, and they spend the whole show holding each other's hands, so the proto can't concentrate on the show. In the end, it's Hayato's turn to go out with Proto, and he takes her to the horror house to show her that he is a real man. But once inside the place, he ends up being more scared than her, and ends up hugging the proto out of fear, causing them both to fall, and his face ends up on the proto's br by pure coincidence. Due to this, the proto runs out to tell Amain everything, but she laughs as she thinks it's like an Otome game. The proto stays on the stairs thinking about how things are going badly with the boys, at that some boys appear and try to flirt with her. Our proto, who was already quite tired and angry, ends up hitting one of them by impulse, then she starts to run, since these boys want to take revenge. To her luck, the four boys come out to defend her, but she doesn't want there to be any more fighting, so she yells at them all to stop at once. Yusuke realizes that he rushed things too much, 
so he decides to take things slower and tells her that to show that he was being serious, he will make the boys dance with each other around the campfire, which ends up being a splendid piece of art for the eyes of the Prota and Amain. Christmas is coming and the boys want to have a party with the Prota, but she already plans something alone, that is to go to the Comatech, the biggest doujinshi selling expo in the country, so Asuba decides that the four of them will accompany her. So after that they go out to have a party, to which they all agree. What the boys don't know is that all this will take a long time. The next day, they all had to get up at 5 a.m. to catch a crowded train and arrive at 7 a.m. at the site. To make things worse, they now have to wait in the long line for more than three hours continuously so that they can enter the Comatech. Upon entering, the guys split into groups so that they can buy all the magazines as soon as possible. While buying the magazines, the guys excited the sales girls of all the stands because they are just like our Prota, they were drooling to see handsome men act as couples. On the other hand, the protagonist goes out for a while after finishing buying everything she needs. At that moment, a prof cameraman keeps insisting that he wants to take pictures of her legs, to which she feels her and doesn't know what to do. Luckily for her, a young man confronts the cameraman and tells him not to be a per in the middle of all the people who look at the guy in a bad way and he apologizes to her and leaves. She thanks the guy and realizes that he's cosplaying a character from her favorite anime, so she starts telling him that he did a great job with the costume. At that, the four boys arrive and the young man tells them that they should take more care of the prota and leaves, but not before kissing her hand, leaving the boys shocked. They apologize to the Prota for being late. Later, they set out to go home, but unfortunately, the traffic on the way back is quite horrible. So they end up arriving without energy to the karaoke, and the only one who had a good time was the Prota. The next day at school, the Prota tells Amain that she met a boy who made a very good cosplay of Sebastian, a character of her anime. Suddenly, the boy appears and greets the Prota. At that instant, she realizes that the boy is really a girl and introduces himself as Shima. So they immediately become friends and both go to lunch with the boys. They are relieved to see that the boy from the previous day is actually a girl, but she is so famous with the other girls in the school, so they become jealous of her again. Shima and the Prota start talking about Anime, so Shima invites the Prota to go to her house because she thinks that she will be shocked by the things she has there. The boys, not to be left behind, pretend to be Anime fans and decide that they will go to Shima's house anyway. She accepts, but with one condition, which she will tell them when they arrive at Shima's house. Once at Shima's house, everyone is surprised to see that she is rich and has entire rooms dedicated to her geek collection. The Prota doesn't stop getting excited when she sees the figures, magazines, everything. In the end, she explodes when they get to the manga room because she has all the magazines from her favorite series, even the ones that she doesn't have, and at that moment, Shima reveals to everyone that she is a famous mangaka and Nozomu starts to lose hope seeing that Shima is practically perfect. Later, Shima tells the boys that they must fulfill her condition and takes them all to the living room, and with a prota, they drool over what they are about to do, since Shima's condition was that the boys pair up and pose together, so she can, let's say, get inspiration for her next manga. After a few pictures, the boys start to refuse to continue as Shima starts to increase the level of physical contact between them. It's then that the prota decides to show them how to do it. She puts Shima's head on her lap. Shima, after seeing Kaz's lips from below, doesn't resist and ends up stealing a kiss, leaving the guys speechless and Kay altered, since that was the prota's first kiss, and it was with a girl. The prota arrives at her house. She can't stop thinking about the kiss that Shima gave her. While browsing through the internet, she finds out that there will be a contest for Valentine's Day, sponsored by the creators of her favorite anime. The next day at school, Shima wants to see Kata tell her about the contest, but Nozomu doesn't let her get too close because of how persistent she is with the Prota. Although they get together anyway, and both start planning how to make the most delicious and visually beautiful chocolate to win the contest, so Shima invites the Prota to her house, and the boys have no choice than just to go with them to watch out that Shima doesn't do anything to the Prota. Already in the house, both begin to practice, and as the common chocolates are very simple, Shima suggests them to make it 3D to increase the complexity. The Prota manages to make a variably doll, so Shima sticks to her to try to teach her closely. Nozomu separates them as he doesn't like Shima's attitude at all. On the other hand, Yusuke asks her why she is so intense with her. Then she tells him that it's because she is attracted to her because of her physical appearance, and tells Yusuke that they can't judge her for that, because they also love her for the same thing. This leaves Yusuke to think. Meanwhile, the Prota makes one last effort to make the best chocolate, but no matter how hard she tried many times, she can't come up with something pretty to compete, so Shima gives her chocolate to her, so she can win the contest. The Prota at first refuses, but the guys convince her, as they tell her that she doesn't have much time, and if she wants to win, she must post the prettiest chocolate, which is obviously the one made by Shima. 
At home, the proto decides to post the photo of her chocolate because in the end, she realizes that what matters is the effort and love of the chocolates, not their appearance. The next day, she explains this to the others and they congratulate her for doing this. And then she gives chocolates to everyone. The next day in class, Akane and her classmates are shocked to see that the proto got fat again because she ate all the chocolate left over from practice. At that, Nozomu and Yusu come in and get upset to see that the proto gained weight again. At that, the proto leaves the classroom and accidentally knocks Hayato out. Then in the infirmary, he and Nozomu plan to make the proto lose weight. Later, the boys head to the confectionery and see Shima along with the proto having a snack since they are celebrating that she won the prize of the Valentine's Day contest. Nozomu wants to celebrate with she too, and tells the proto that it would be best for her to look nice before meeting the idols from her NIM. So after the classes are finished, they both start an intensive training plan, which leaves the proto very exhausted. The next day, Hayato suggests an exercise that maybe the proto might like because it is a very otaku move and forces the other boys to also do it for show her their support. She likes the exercise and doesn't stop doing it, but she takes it too seriously. And when she makes a bad move, she ends up hurting her back and is taken to the infirmary. Shima starts to argue with the guys, telling them to stop trying to help the proto to lose weight because they are only causing trouble. Asuma tells her that this is not her decision, this is the proto's, and she accepts that this is true, but it doesn't stop him from starting to overprotect her. The next day, the proto notices that Shima is very overprotective, so she becomes tired of it and wants to leave the class. Yusuke notices this, so he helps her to escape from Shima Shima's surveillance and takes her to the school's terrace. He tells her that she doesn't have to lose weight if she doesn't want to, but she tells him that she can't waste all the help from the others and wants to accomplish the goal of losing weight no matter what. This touches Yusu's heart as he realizes that what he likes about her is her determination and desire to succeed, not her physique, and he recognizes that he is in love with her even though she is fat now. Upon returning to the classroom, he tells Nozomu this and Nozomu is disgusted to hear it, but he tells him that it is more important to make her beautiful and slim again. Then at the gym, they give her a a list of prizes that the proto can claim only if she loses a few kilos. All the prizes are Fujoshi things, which would be glorious for her to see. It is then that the proto, without wasting time, starts training quickly, but Yusuke tells her to take it easy to avoid getting hurt, proving to Shima that his feelings are not only for her figure. After a few days, thanks to the effort of the boys, the proto manages to lose weight, but Shima had added an extra prize which was a kiss between Yusuke and Nozomu, so the proto explodes into pieces to see a kiss between two men so closely. Days later, the proto arrives at the school with a blank look on her face, ignoring the boys as she walks. Then at the confectionery, Shima asks her what's wrong, to which she confesses that it's because she found a new favorite character in another series. Shima was already aware and is also crazy about this new character. So the two start having their typical Fujoshi conversation, until they collide because of a different opinion, and that is about who is the bottom of the relationship of the character they like with their master. So the two end up fighting. The next day, neither of them greets each other in the hallway, and Akane notices this, so she asks Nozomu and Yusuke if they know what problem the proto has with Shina. They tell her about what happened the day before, so Akane gets scared, since that kind of fights is common between Fujoshis, because it is the kind of fight that destroys friendships, so the guy Seeing that the Proto and Shima are not happy separated, decide to do everything to make them reconciled. Asuma calls the Proto lying to her and says that he started watching the anim and is interested in buying figurines, so the Proto agrees to be his guide. On the other hand, Yusuke convinces Shima to buy figurines for the Proto, telling her that she shouldn't mind helping him since she is no longer friends with the Proto. The guys manage to gather both of them in the same place at the same time, saying that it's a coincidence that they met. The guys grab them so they don't run away, and they all go to lunch together. At the table, the guys talk about the N9 so that Shima and the Proto react and talk to them, but Hayato messes up a couple times as he reminds the girls of the things they fought about. In the end, they decide to declare a war to see who is right in their anime's charactership. For this, they agree to make a doujinshi of their own, publish it on a manga site, and the fanfic that gets the most hits will win. Yusu tells Shima that this might end his friendship with the protagonist, but he stops there, since it is not bad for him to have one less rival. The days passes, and the proto works hard to finish her manga on time, then Hayato in the hallway of the school meets Shima and tries to convince her to give up on the war, since he has a lot of advantage as a professional mangaka, but she corners him and tells him that it is better not to interfere in where he is not called. The day of the publication arrives, the girls go to the school terrace and show their cell phones with the results of the fanfic. The winner turns out to be Shima, so the proto accepts her defeat, but says that it won't change the way she thinks about the fanfic she made. Then Yusu congratulates Shima and tells her that now she made the person she loves cry, leaving Shima to think about it. These words affected Shima a lot, because when she first came to school, the first thing she heard was that her classmates criticized her for being rich, but she saw the proto tripping and falling with a classmate, which she thought was funny and cute. Also, she remembers that she was the first one to buy all her mangas when she was starting with her business. Sometime later, Shina wanted to meet the proto in person for the first time, so she started looking for her around the school, but she didn't 
didn't recognize her because she had lost weight. On the day of the Comatech, Shima had met the Proto without her knowing it. So the next day, she just found out that the beautiful girl she met at the Comatech was the same chubby girl who had always supported her. And that's when she realizes that it's not worth losing her for a ship. On the other hand, the Proto is with the guys in a restaurant and doesn't want to answer Shima's calls. So Yusuke, as a good friend, sends her the location of where they are so that she can arrive and reconcile with the Proto since their friendship is more important than any ship. Thanks to this, they manage to reach an agreement and decide that both should be versatile in the relationship, which leaves the boys confused. Days goes by and the anniversary of the character on which the creators based to make the main character of the anime that the Proto likes arrives, so she and Shima decide to go to visit the sanctuary where the event will take place, and they try to leave the boys aside because they know that they don't like the anime like them. But it turns out that Asuma does like it, since that anime has many references of history, and for this reason he likes it. Because of this, the other guys decide to go, since they don't plan to leave the main character alone. They go to an old hotel and everyone, except Nozomu and Yusuke, are moved by the rusticness of the place. Bedtime comes and they start to have pillow fights and at one point, Yusuke ends up on top of the Proda. She gets nervous but just at that moment, the housekeeper interrupts them for making too much noise and they end up fighting. At that, Yusuke is surprised to see the Proto's reaction as she seems to like him, at least a little bit. The next day, they all head to the temple to pray and after that, they go to the museum where the armor of their favorite character is located. But the security guard rushes them since the girls stay admiring the statue for a long time and there are more people waiting for their turn. Asuma tells everyone that it would be best to visit the Lord's grave, so they all go and start praying for the Lord, although the Proto and Shima stay for a long time. Later, they go to eat something at a restaurant at that. Asuma tells everyone that the grave they visited only contains the body of the Lord, since the head was buried on a small island near where they are, so the girls want to go at all costs. At that moment, the owner of the restaurant warns them not to go, since the place, according to rumors, is cursed. This is more than enough reason for the Proto and Shima to want to go, so they make a game to decide who goes with whom in the boats to get to the island. By coincidence of life, Yusuke ends up paired with the Proto and he tells her not to be afraid and not to resist to receive affection and proceeds to take her hand and she accepts him. Nozomu and Shima manage to see what Yusuke is doing with the Proto, so they get angry and at full speed hit their boat to stop him from flirting with the Proto. After a while, a storm surprises them and although they are in a lake, they end up being sucked by a whirlpool, so they get separated into two groups. On one side, Shima and Hayato get scared as they see Nozomu unconscious, and these motivate Yusuke to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing to his friend, which fascinates Shima a lot, and she proceeds to take a couple of pictures for his Fujoshi collection. On the other hand, Asuma is with a protomat, and she is also unconscious, so Asuma decides to give her mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, but he doesn't succeed, because the proto manages to wake up and react before that happens. They both talk about what happened and set out to find the rest of their friends. Unfortunately for them, both groups realize after a long time they were walking in circles. In a moment, the protagonist collapses from a fever, so Asuma takes her to a cabin he found over there. Inside the cabin, Asuma takes off the proto's clothes and hugs her, being almost naked. He does this for her safety. Let's assume this is the case. When she wakes up, the proto thinks that it was all a dream since she had the impression that a furry cat was hugging her so she wouldn't get cold, although the joy of both doesn't last long since they have to leave the cabin and run because some souls chase them. It turns out that the place is in fact cursed, and the samurai on which the proto's favorite character was based takes anyone who interrupts his lord's rest. Thanks to destiny, Asuma had bought an amulet at the temple, and it protects them from the souls that were chasing them, but Asuma is having a difficult time stopping the samurai. It is then when the proto attacks, since she also has an amulet similar to Asuma's, plus she learned many things about exorcism when researching her animes. The samurai stops when he hears the proto's discourse, as she talks to him about how much the people love him, which affects the samurai and decides to leave in peace so that his lord can rest. At the end of the day, everyone returns to the restaurant and the owner apologizes because apparently he gave the guys hallucinogenic mushrooms, but Asuma is not so sure about that because his amulet is actually damaged, which leaves everyone wondering if what they experienced was real or not. But the real thing was the indirect kiss between Yusuke and Nozomu. Oh yes. The next day at school, Nozomu notices that a lot of things happen between Yusuke and the proto the day before since now they both do things alone, like holding each other's hands so he feels that he has been left behind from the other boys, since the proto also treats the rest differently, except for him. Back at home, Nozomu thinks that the only advantage he had to get close to the proto was that he he looked like her old favorite character, who by the way has already passed away, so she doesn't care much anymore. It is then that Nozomu starts to think how he can regain his advantage.
bandage, but at that, his little sister interrupts him as she tells him to get ready to do the dance from her favorite Anon. Nerzomu realizes that he wastes a lot of time on weekends dancing with his sister, so he sets out to find a way to do something with the Prota on the next vacation. The next day, the Prota tells everyone she won't be able to go out anywhere because she will start working as she doesn't have the money to pay for tickets to all the conventions she wants to go to. Hearing this, they all sign up for the same job, and to Nozomu's luck, it's a play about the anim he watches with his little sister, so he gets a job next to the Prota in the main cast. Thanks to this, they can practice together, and he can finally spend time alone with her, but Yusuke realizes that Nozomu is trying to take the lead, so he starts meddling whenever he can. In one of those, Nozomu collapses from a fever that he caught the night before for not drying his hair after sleep. While in bed, he starts hallucinating with the Prota, and when she moves to give him food, he ends up forcibly kissing her as he is sleepwalking. Yusu goes to the practices but doesn't find any of them, so the castmates tell him that Nozomu got sick and they took him home so he goes to see him. When Yusuke enters into Nozomu's room, he sees what he did to the Prota, so he doesn't doubt for a second to hit him. The Prota can't believe what happened, so she runs away. Yusu gets upset with Nozomu for taking advantage of his situation to kiss the Prota, but he was only having hallucinations in his dream. When he wakes up, Nozomu can't believe what he did and sends several messages to the Prota, but she ignores him. As if that wasn't enough, she also misses practice for the show, so the rest of castmates start to consider replacing her. But Nozomu's little sister wants the Prota to be the one who participates, so Nozomu goes to talk to the Prota in person and he goes to her house, since he wants to fulfill his little sister's wish. On the other hand, the Prota is in bed with a fever. While watching a BL manga, she realizes that when someone steals you a kiss, it's not so nice when you experience it firsthand. Just then, Nozomu comes to her house to talk to her, though she obviously doesn't want to see him, so Nozomu loses his fear and yells at her telling her the whole truth, making her feel more embarrassed. The Prota's brother comes out to try to kick Nozomu out, and Nozomu says he will leave, but first he has to give her the gift his little sister did for the Prota. She comes to her senses and decides to participate in the show. On the day of the show, everything was going well, except for a group of fanatics who were very annoying. This group does not stop bothering the others, so Nozomu together with the Prota decide to attack them for causing many disturbances in the crowd. In the middle of the fight, one of the members of the show gets injured, so Nozomu decides to take her place and both end up giving a great show thanks to the fact that Nozomu knows the choreography to perfection, all for having practice with his little sister. Nozomu manages to patch things up with the Prota, but the rest make fun of him because he looks funny in a dress, although the Prota sees him as very brave and reminds him that sometimes men can be very trustworthy. Days later, the whole group goes for a walk to Shima's beach house, but Hayato doesn't know why he agreed to go, since he's quite skinny and doesn't like being shirtless. Plus, he's a more homely guy, so now he doesn't know how to escape from there. Shima goes surfing with the boys, but he can't follow them because he doesn't know how to surf, but the Prota has the same issue, and that leaves the opportunity for them to be alone. Despite the fact that they are beginners, they both have a good time together. It is in that, that she's impressed to see Nozomu and Yusuke surfing in an almost professional way, so Hayato plucks up his courage and decides to do the same and start surfing. He manages to surprise everyone, but then he ends up crashing and falls on top of the protagonist's breath. Again. This upsets everyone, but she knows it wasn't on purpose, so she forgives him. Then they go to eat something in that the boys listen to some men from the table behind, who were talking about how beautiful the women are, especially the Prota and Shina. This is why the boys tell the girls to go to the beach and threaten the men so that they don't go near any of the girls and they scared except. On Hayato's side, a little bit later, he realizes the reason why the boys had pushed the Prota and Shima away, and he feels bad for not having been able to do anything, and thinks that he doesn't intimidate anyone by being so skinny and weak. He begins to feel that he is useless, since he throws away the food that the protagonist and the others were making, which ends up making him cry and decides to return to his house. The Prota and the others go looking for him, but they realize that he is so silly that he went in the opposite direction to the cabin, and most likely he got lost in the woods. On the way, the Prota ends up getting separated from the others because of his suspension bridge that ended up breaking once she passed. Luckily, the bridge was not very high, so she continued on her way to find Hayato. Meanwhile, the others try to surround the path. She, in the end, manages to find him, but not in the way she expected, since he was trapped between vines, which reminds her of a Yawa scene of a cute boy with a monster with tentacles. After controlling his Fujoshi impulses, she helps him and they go to an abandoned building, since it started to rain, but it turns out that this is the hideout of the men who harassed the girls in the beach restaurant. These boys, seeing that the only one who is with the Prota is Hayato, they decide to take the protagonist by force, but Hayato does not stay still and kicks the calf of the man who was holding the Prota to try to save her. Just at that moment, the others arrive, so all together they teach these men a lesson for trying to do something to the protagonist. Hayato apologizes for causing everyone so much inconvenience, but everyone already takes into account that he is quite silly, so Hayato accepts his weaknesses and decides that he must improve as a person in order to stay with the Prota. Although for the moment, he is still too silly, so much so that he doesn't pay attention to where he walks. Back at school, Asuna finds 
finds a treasure map in the History Club room, so he invites his friends to play Hunt the Treasure. But the only one who gets excited is the Prota, so they plan hearing this, the rest are upset, and decide to accompany them. Although Shima does not understand why they are so scared that Asuma and the Prota are alone since he has been the only one who has not given suspicion of having other intentions with the protagonist. In the cave where they were looking for the treasure, Yusuke asks Asuma directly if he plans to conquer the protagonist, and he answers that obviously he loves the protagonist, but he also loves each and every one of them, which leaves Yusuke confused. Because of this, Yusuke asks another question, this one being more specific, which leaves Asuma thinking since he had never considered the protagonist as a special person, but the more he thinks about it, the more he realizes that he loves her in a different way from the rest. Right at that moment, the boys light up the roof of the cave and they get a big scare when they see a lot of bats, so they all start running, except for the Prota and Asuma, and they are left behind in the dark. This makes Asuma remember a trauma he had when he was a child, so he can't move from where he is. This is why the Prota has to take him by the hand with the rest. Because of this, Asuma hugs her when they find the others, because he didn't want her to get too far away from him. In the end, they end up finding the treasure, but it turns out to be quite disappointing since it was just a joke from the former president of the History Club, and this is none other than Asuma's older brother, named Kazuma. Days later, Kazuma arrives as a trainee teacher at the protagonist's school, and despite not living in the same house as Asuma, he is very affectionate with his brother, showing his affection in front of the protagonist and Shima, leaving them speechless. Kazuma appears in front of her, and they both begin to talk, although Asuma tries to prevent her brother from talking too much with the protagonist, and this grabs her attention, since the Asuma she knows would not do something like that. The weekend arrives, and the protagonist, after finishing buying otaku things, beats Kazuma, who is leaving the cinema, so he invites her to eat to get to know her better. Then at Asuma's house, her brother surprises him from behind and tells him that he went to eat with the protagonist, also tells him that he is lucky to have a girl as beautiful as her. Asuma doesn't say anything, but she feels a discomfort in her chest hearing him say all that. The next day, Kazuma goes to see the protagonist because he wanted to give her a limited edition doll that he won a long time ago and kept it, and he proceeds to give it to her. In that, a book falls from the shelf, so Kazuma grabs the protagonist so that the book does not fall on her head, and this makes them end up very close, and he does not miss this opportunity to tell her how cute she is and try to kill Kiss her. Asuma arrives and hits his brother and tells him that it's not right for a teacher to flirt with the students, to which Kazuma tells him that it won't be a problem in a few months, since he will stop being a teacher. But Asuma lies and tells him that he and the protagonist are dating, leaving the protagonist speechless. The protagonist can't believe what Asuma said, and just at that moment, the other boys and Shima arrive, and unscrupulously, expose Asuma's lie. Kazuma is glad to know that Asuma was only lying, that's when the boys realize that they screwed up by showing off Asuma, since now Kazuma will try to flirt with the protagonist without any restrictions, adding him into the list of suitors of the proto. In the corridor, Kazuma pretends to ask her to hang out, but Hayato interrupts the talk and manages to make her leave. At that moment, Kazuma confronts Hayato and shows him the photos when he was dressed as a princess, which psychologically collapses him, and ends up defeated by Kazuma. Later in Kazuma's class, he proposes a challenge that a student who answers a question wrong will be penalized with a kiss from him, and everyone gets excited about this, except the boys. When the protagonist's turn arrives, Kazuma increases the difficulty of the question, leaving the protagonist without knowing what to answer, so Yusuke sacrifices himself by taking her question, and says that he doesn't know the answer, in order to receive the teacher's kiss. Kazuma obviously doesn't kiss him because it's illegal for a professor to do something like that, but he takes the opportunity to insinuate that Yusuke and Nozomu are dating, since the Nozomu seemed very worried because of Yusuke's sacrifice for the protagonist. So everyone begins to believe this rumor invented by the professor, leaving them defeated before Kazuma. Seeing this, Shima decides to take care of Kazuma herself, but returns a few hours later defeated, since it turns out that Kazuma read a book in front of her, which was the first manga she made, and it had several errors and comments from her written on it, for which she was ashamed and accepted the defeat. It is then that the boys have no choice but to ask Asuma for help, since they believe that being her brother, he is the only one who can defeat him. So he agrees and confronts his brother, telling him to stop flirting with the Prota, since he knows him and knows that he is being capricious. But Kazuma tells him that it's not a whim, and he seriously wants to win her over. In that, so that Asuma doesn't keep meddling, he locks him in a closet, just like he did when they were kids, since Asuma was always the kind of brother who would rather see his older brother happy than him be happy himself. It gets dark, and the boys, after a long search, finally find Asuma. He doesn't know whether to let his brother continue to get away with it, or get out of the way and accept defeat, like the other boys and Shima did. The next day, Kazuma, through the school loudspeaker, challenges his brother to decide which of the two deserves a chance to conquer the Prota. The challenge consists of a card game that they both played when they were children. This catches the attention of many people, especially since it is a duel between the two most handsome brothers in the school. On the day of the card duel, the fight between them is very intense since they are both very good. But Asuma Kazuma ends up winning, since Kazuma underestimated his brother's daring, thinking that he was still the same as when he was little. But this time, 
time what was at stake is something that Asumo was not willing to lose, and that is why he ends up directly telling the protagonist that he is in love with her. The protagonist didn't listen well to what Asuma told her, so the others took him away so that he won't say it again. In a school year, they ask him what he thinks he's doing, then Asuma tells them that he planned to tell the protagonist that he's in love with her since he just realized that the protagonist is that special someone he wants to have a relationship with. Because of this, they all come together to prevent Asuma from having contact with the protagonist. On the one hand, Shima and Yusuke are in charge of taking her to her house in addition to blocking Asuma's number on the protagonist's phone. On the other hand, Hayato is in charge of keeping an eye on Asuma, so that he doesn't do anything strange or try to call the protagonist, although obviously it doesn't work, since he is blocked. And so he could never communicate with the protagonist since then, even the telegram that he sent to her house was not received by her, but by her brother. Several days pass and Asuma realizes what the boys are up to, so he sneaks past Hayato's surveillance and goes straight to the school's loudspeakers. He through the school's loudspeakers tells the protagonist to meet on the terrace at the end of classes, since he has something important to tell her. The boys find Asuma and confront him, but he tells them that they don't gain anything by getting in the way of his declaration of love, and instead they should declare to the protagonist as well, since they are supposed to feel the same way, that's when they all they realize that they have never told him their feelings directly, so they are thoughtful. Anyway, they all go to the terrace and declare their love to the protagonist, so she is left without knowing what to say. So she runs out and goes to Akane's house to ask for help. Akane takes pity on the boys in Shima, then tells him that if it were a dating game, he would have to try all the possibilities to see if any of them like him, which he thinks is a wonderful idea. The next day, the protagonist tells the boys in Shima that she will have a date with each of them, before making a decision on who to choose. On her dates, she notices that Yusuke is very talkative, but he tends to say cute things from time to time. On the other hand, Nozomu is very funny and knows how to deal with children for being a great older brother. Hayato is clumsy but reliable. Shima is practically his soulmate by sharing his Fujoshi tastes, and Asuma is very mature and direct with what he wants. After all these appointments, the protagonist ended up more confused, since she does not know who awakens something special in her. When she gets home, she sees something on TV that catches her attention, and immediately, she gets the answer that she will give the boys. It turns out that they will release a new season of her old favorite Anime, so now she will be attentive to see how the story of this new season develops, leaving everyone without a concrete answer, since she has her values deeply rooted and says that she will always be a spectator and not a protagonist. Don't